welcome to this the next session in the module on spoken english part of this course in english today we are going to have some exercise some practice in identifying long vowels in a real life speech we have already seen what consonants and vowel sounds are and vowel sounds are characterized also by length some vowel sounds in english in particular are long very long in you and they constitute they make the rhythm of english you know along with pauses and stresses it is the length of vowel sounds which contributes significantly to the typical rhythm of the english language you know long vowels followed by short vowels again long vowels followed by short vowels that makes the rhythm of the english speech next screen you know so we have already looked at some samples of how pauses and stresses create a rhythm we have seen that in speeches in conversation and uh, in some songs another speech and this time we are not looking only at pauses and stresses of course we are looking at them as well but we are also additionally going to look at the length of vowel sounds whether we can identify you know long vowel sounds from others in a spoken text in english okay next in all the standard varieties of english worldwide there are more long vowel sounds than short ones actually in some there can be up to 20 vowel sounds and at least 12 of them are long sounds you know they are longer than 700 800 nanoseconds some are longer than even 1000 nanoseconds longer than long vowels in many other languages in the world therefore for learners of the english language it is important that they acquire the habit of speech such that they can distinguish between long and short vowels and their short vowels are short enough and their long vowels are long enough and one way of doing that is to look at them in some standard speech in some sample of well known speakers what we have taken is something like that the speech by jawahar lal nehru at the freedom of india many people you know it is also generally remembered as nehru's speech called trust with a trust with destiny this was actually go next this was actually the speech nehru gave at the constituent assembly on the midnight of 14 15 august when india became independent at the stroke of midnight hour india became independent and nehru gave this speech heralding a nations you know voicing a nations hope and aspirations from its freedom okay as you listen to this speech you know you can mark stresses on polysyllabic words you can also underline all the long vowels which also means that you can look at the text and you can listen to the speech again and again it may not be 
one listening or one look at the text may not be enough but it is possible for some of you it is enough in that case you don't need to otherwise for those of us who have not been used to this kind of exercise or exposed to this kind of speech please do not hesitate and listen to this is speech once or twice with the text again once or twice without the text and then finally with the text such that you mark the text for as we have said here number 1 come back number 1 mark stresses on bisyllabic trisyllabic and polysyllabic words and underline the long vowels in all uh the entire speech in all words wherever you see a long vowel you may please underline that long vowel after doing all this you can also try and give a spoken imagine you are a television reporter and you are summarizing a long speech you know no television no mass medium no newspaper no radio reporter can afford to reproduce the entire speech for that they have a separate channel separate hour so what most reporters do is give a present a summary of the speeches the events the talks they may have heard you can do the same thing here this will also give you some practice in speaking in a natural real life situation okay so here we go jawarlal nehru you know i mean this photograph represents him when he was still very young before independence of india remember he became prime minister when he was already 59 or so okay so listen to this speech first the speech is longer the text is also longer you can look at all of it at your leisure but look at the text now look at the transcript now okay this is it it will be good if you made a note of <clears throat> the bisyllabic trisyllabic words and tried and marked underlined long vowels and then again go back to the tech go back to the speech and compare whether you have done them correctly next next we have done it for you you know we have marked the stresses after you done your work you know please you know, as i have always said it is possible it is always possible for any one of us to say oh look it's boring i am not going to do it and come to the answer come to the example given you know in that case you are missing a chance for yourself of learning something important and useful so i'm quite confident none of us is going to do that and we will come and look at it only after we've done our part of the work and it is possible you you have got them all right and it's also possible that you have made some mistakes somewhere if that is the case you can go back to the speech listen to it again and correct any mistakes that you might have made that is perhaps the best way to learn a skill and to learn a language <clears throat> so please as you play you know uh, compare your work with what we have given here here we have you know on this this slide you have stressed syllables in bisyllabic or polysyllabic words so for example in the first line destiny <clears throat> it is stressed on the initial syllable but in the second line the word redeem it is stressed on the second syllable measure first syllable midnight first syllable or substantially second syllable actually a uh, substantially fourth syllable from the end okay second 
from the beginning. So, you know, this, this is the problem with English, you know. Unlike many other languages, it is not certain in English that all the initial words or all the final words or all the, all the penultimate syllables or all the second syllables in any word are stressed. In English, it can be on the final syllable, on the initial syllable, on the pre-final syllable, on the post-initial syllable. That is why as we learn the meaning and the spelling of a word, it is important that we, we should also learn how to stress a bisyllabic, a trisyllabic and a polysyllabic word, you know, words of three or longer syllables in English, okay. As I said in an earlier session, you may think it is a mind-boggling exercise. In theory, yes. In practice, no. Because we only speak a certain kind of and a certain number of words even in our work life, even in our academic life. So, you know, we have made a study and we found, you know, with students at the Indian Institute of Technology Madras and with faculty at the Institute of, at the Indian Institute of Technology Madras, that fewer than a thousand long words are used frequently in academic situation. Actually, there is a long and sorry, actually there is an old study by somebody called Professor Gimson of London who said that, you know, fewer than 15 percent bisyllabic and trisyllabic words are used frequently. Almost 87 percent words that are used frequently are monosyllabic words. You can see that here as well, you know. In the first two lines, only two words are bisyllabic, destiny and redeem. So, you know, with practice, you can overcome these problems and you can get them all right. Next. Now, this slide gives you, you know, we have underlined all the long vowels. You can compare your work with the examples given here. And if they are wrong, you can do them again. If they are right, you can congratulate yourself and go to the next piece of work. Next. Once again, we have given you speech by another popular leader of our times. Listen to that speech, you know. It is rather a long speech. If you have time, listen to all of it. Otherwise, only to add a part of it and do the same thing. Namely, underline long vowels, mark stresses and then prepare a spoken summary, a spoken report like television or radio reporters do. This is the best way to learn how to speak standard varieties of English so that you understand everyone and everyone understands you around the world. Thank you and good luck.